Peggy 18. Nineteen ninety eight. It began with a disturbance in the Arkley Mountains, a region in the American Midwest near Raccoon City. People were going missing and turning up dead. Thus, the story of Resident Evil begins. July twenty fourth, nineteen ninety eight. Raccoon City Police Department's Stars Alpha Team loses contact with Bravo Team, who were sent to investigate the Arkley Mountains incidents and set out to find them. Following a zombie dog attack, they're chased into a mansion, the iconic setting for Resident Evil. Trapped in the mansion are team leader Albert Wesker and team members Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. Chris and Jill are Resident Evil's protagonists. Now, as you may already know, this mansion is full of zombies. The iconic backwards glance zombie. Zombies hiding in closets. Zombies that suddenly spring into action. Yep, it's zombies, zombies, zombies. But that's not all. There's also a whole host of biological weapons, BOWs, blocking our protagonist's paths. As you might have guessed, this is no ordinary mansion. In fact, it's an Umbrella laboratory for creating biological weapons. Umbrella, a run-of-the-mill giant pharmaceutical corporation by day, biological weapons dealer by night. Chris and the other Alpha Team members find out about the T-Virus, a terrifying virus that turns infected humans into zombies. After escaping the mansion, our heroes discover that team leader Wesker is actually the diabolical mastermind behind everything. In fact, he's an Umbrella agent. Except he's also trying to cut his ties with Umbrella and join another organization. He lured Alpha Team here to acquire BOW combat data, which he planned to give as a gift to this other organization. Just like in the real world, sometimes people in the world of RE need to go to extreme links to get a new job too. Anyway, after overcoming various challenges, our heroes escape the mansion with the other members who survived. After they escape, the mansion is engulfed in a huge explosion, which is something of a serious staple. Next up is Resident Evil 2, which we'll cover right after we've gone one day back in time. July 23rd, 1998. Bravo Team, the team sent out before Alpha Team, were involved in an unfortunate helicopter crash. Incidentally, people say RE helicopters are always crashing, but there are lots of helicopters that don't crash too. But yeah, this one crashed. Anyway, since nobody was injured in the crash, the team proceeded with their investigation into the area. One of the team members, Wonder Child Rebecca Chambers, one of RE Zero's protagonists, boards a stopped train. On the train, she meets the game's other protagonist, Billy Cohen, a convict who's been sentenced to death. Unfortunately, the train that the two of them are riding runs out of control and crashes into the Umbrella training facility. There they find out about Dr. James Marcus, the creator of the T-Virus. Dr. Marcus was one of Umbrella's founding members. But he was assassinated by two of his underlings, Albert Wesker and William Birkin. After overcoming various obstacles, Rebecca and Billy escape the facility. And the story leads into Resident Evil. September 1998. Two months have passed since Resident Evil's mansion incident, and Raccoon City has been transformed into a town of wandering zombies. Rookie cop Leon S. Kennedy and Chris's little sister, Claire Redfield, appear on the scene. These two are Resident Evil 2's protagonists. Both Leon and Claire meet characters who change their lives forever. Leon meets Ada Wong, a spy who's trying to get her hands on the G-Virus, a new virus developed by William Birkin. And Claire meets a little girl called Sherry Birkin, who, because she's carrying a G-Virus sample from her father, William, is being chased by everyone. After overcoming all sorts of problems, Leon, Claire, and Sherry meet up, defeat Birkin, who injected the G-Virus, and escape the laboratory. Which, naturally, blows up. Next up is Resident Evil 3. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. There's just so much Resident Evil to explain that we'll have to cover the rest of the story in part two. See you then!